Congratulations on your Toyota forklift purchase. Today we're going to go over some of the common features of our 3,000 to 4,000 pound models which range from the 8FBE 15U to the 8FBE 20U. Specifically today we're showing the 8FBE 20U 4,000 pound electric three-wheel forklift. In order to access the battery compartment, you don't have to move the seat back, but you do need to release the steering wheel so that it can come up straight. Undo the safety latch, release the hood latch, and bring the hood straight back. Once it's in the upright position, you want to apply the safety latch to hold the hood up so that nobody can push it down on you while you're working on the battery. This forklift is outfitted with a battery that has an automatic watering system on it, which makes life easy for you. Basically, each cell is connected uh, with a hose. And at the other one end, you've got the, the um, water hose. On the other end, you're gonna have the supply hose, which is gonna be connected to your water source. You remove the dust cap, quick connect to the supply, turn on the water, and then the flow paddles or the regulator balls in some other models will spin. When that water stops flowing through, the spinning will stop. You know that the cells are all filled and then you can disconnect from the supply, put your hose away, put the dust cap back on and your battery is, is watered and ready to be used. There are other watering tools that you can use as well, but you will have to remove the caps manually. So when you're charging the battery, it's always good practice to keep the hood open to allow heat to escape. You're gonna take the connector from the battery, connector from the charger, put them together, place the cable down safely. After a few seconds, your charger should kick on and then you're good for a six to eight hour charge. When the charge is done, allow the battery to cool down another six to eight hours, and at that time you can check for watering and then use it for your next shift. Once you're done charging and you're ready to drive the forklift, you need to get the hood back down, so you're gonna release the safety latch in the back. There are no buttons to push in order to release the hood. It'll just come down on its own safely. You want to reapply the safety latch as well. This is the hood latch. You do need to always have the safety latch down as well. This is what's gonna keep the battery in the truck. If you were to have an accident, you know, go off a dock, flip the truck, anything like that, this is gonna help keep the battery in and keep you safe inside the compartment. The operator's seat can be adjusted forward and back with the lever. It also has a backrest angle adjustment, as well as lumbar support and the suspension can be adjusted for different operators with different weights from the front. Once you're in your seat, you have all your controls at your fingertips. So your directional lever is on the left. That's your forward, neutral, and reverse. Below the levers and to the right of the steering wheel is your data plate, where you'll find information like your truck's model number, serial number, attachments that are in use with the forklift, in this case a side shifter, the maximum lift height the mast is capable of and the derated capacity that the forklift can lift based on that setup. The weight of the truck is also listed as well as the minimum and maximum weights of the battery required and the maximum amp hour allowed. All this information needs to be correct and kept up to date. If a different attachment is installed, the mast gets swapped out or the load center is different than what is listed, then a new data plate must be ordered to match the new configuration. You can have multiple data plates if the forklift will be switching back and forth between attachments and load centers. So the zero degrees is showing you the tilt angle of your forks. So as we tilt backwards, you'll see a negative up to six degrees. And if we tilt forward, you'll see the degrees the other way. So besides using the automatic fork leveler, you can use that to know if your forks are level at zero. Regarding the time, you have an hour meter here. When you press it the first time, you're gonna get the key on, which is what we use to track warranty. If you press it one more time, you're gonna see your material handling time, which is the tire and the fork. That combination there is the hour meter that we use for scheduling maintenance. 
whether you're on a program maintenance, a full maintenance plan, uh, the time will depend on the program you're on as well as the severity of your application. When operating the forklift in reverse, you might have the tendency to reach out and grab the overhead guard. We want to keep your hand inside, so we've installed a rear assist grip that you can hold on to while you're driving in reverse. That keeps your hand from being rubbed up against another forklift or a wall or racking and keeps you safe. You also have a rear assist button on the handle that you can use to warn pedestrians that you're coming their way rather than beeping like you normally would on the steering wheel. If the parking brake is released and you try to exit from the forklift, once you leave the seat and the sensor realizes you're off the truck, it either thinks that you forgot the parking brake or you may have fallen out of the truck, in which case the truck is disabled. At this point, the controls don't work. The lifting, side shifting, nothing will work until I get back on the truck and either apply the brake or I need to put the truck back into neutral to reset the controls. In behind the seat, in the combined operators and owner's manual, you can reference things like operator responsibility, pre-operation checks, handling a load, and even how to safety transport your forklift. You'll also find information on things like switches and levers, the instrument panel, maintenance procedures that the operator can complete, and a lubrication chart. This book needs to stay in the back of the truck so that the operator can reference it when needed. If you need to adjust the fork spread, you can do so manually. You need to get the pin out of the notch so that it, so that it can slide to the spot you want it to. Then when you turn the pin back and down, it'll fall and click into place. Just like that.